While many brass embouchure issues are personal in nature, there is some basic advice that will apply for most players. It's important to understand that the recommendations I am about to give are only intended for players to concern themselves about in the practice room or during their warm-up period. The exact exercises that are used are less important than how the exercises are played. Working with beginning brass students offers a particular challenge to teachers. Ultimately, I've found that when left up to their own experimentation, most beginners will naturally gravitate to the embouchure type appropriate for their anatomy. Since some students may come across different information, or try to reason out where to place the mouthpiece, it may be helpful to actively encourage beginners to allow their placement to move where it wants to. Beyond that, helping beginners with their embouchure should mainly be focused on avoiding bad habits. Until a student has been playing a while and developed a certain amount of embouchure strength and control, it can be difficult to determine which embouchure type will ultimately work best for the student. Younger students, who are still growing, or with braces, may correctly evolve from one embouchure type to another. Encouraging good posture and holding the instrument correctly and consistently will also help with students' embouchures. The left hand on trumpet and trombone should be responsible for supporting the entire weight of the instrument, as well as making the embouchure motion. Horn players who rest the bell on the lap may find that it locks the angle of the instrument lower than it should be. Euphonium and tuba players often must compromise slightly between adjusting their bodies and the angle of the instrument, but will want to work towards bringing the instrument to the lips, not their lips to the instrument. I also personally feel that a lot of popular methods for beginners start off in too low a range. While it may be easier for a beginner to get the initial sound on a low note, it's much easier to get a sound with incorrect technique while playing lower. Since we want to encourage good embouchure form as quickly as possible, Beginning students will be less likely to play with a collapsed embouchure formation if they start by learning to play around the third open partial. You will want to build in some brief rest periods while they are building endurance because it is a bit more taxing to play higher. Many players allow their mouthpiece placement to drift around onto different spots on their lips or they open their mouth to inhale and must constantly adjust to the shifting position of the mouthpiece on their lower lip after every breath. Other players set the mouthpiece first, then from their lips underneath, twisting around their lips inside the mouthpiece. In order to encourage a stable embouchure formation, I recommend spending some practice time firming the lips into position then placing the mouthpiece on the lips only after the embouchure formation is already set. When breathing, it is important to try to maintain the embouchure position as much as possible. Breathing through the nose is a good way to start off and get familiar with this sensation. Once that becomes comfortable, the player can start inhaling through the mouth corners while keeping the lips inside the mouthpiece lightly touching. This may feel a little strange at first, but over time, it should help players perform with more consistency. Around the turn of the last century, it was common practice to pull the mouth corners back, as if smiling, to ascend. This works to a degree, because it stretches the tissue of the lips tighter and does aid with faster vibrations. The trade-off, however, is that because the lips are stretched thinner, they are more sensitive to mouthpiece pressure and endurance issues. The tone quality also suffers, and typically these players end up with a range cap around where they can no longer pull their corners back further. 
Today, it is widely acknowledged that a smile embouchure is something to be avoided. Playing in the low register requires a brass musician to have a larger embouchure aperture and more surface area of the lips must vibrate. Allowing the embouchure formation to collapse and become too loose will actually help a player play in the low register, but it can lead to some issues, including having to reset the mouthpiece on the lips to ascend back up. Very high placement and low placement embouchure types both are more prone to this problem as players of these types often find the lip compression for the high register to be comparatively easy, but struggle more in the low register. Often, exaggerating the embouchure motion while locking the mouth corners in place can help these players learn how to descend with embouchure compression. The exaggerated motion can be reduced as soon as the player is able. In both cases of the smile embouchure and collapsing embouchure formation to descend, simply trying to keep the mouth corners locked in place often will not be enough to ultimately correct the issue. Free buzzing can help strengthen the muscle group that intersects just under the corners of the mouth. Because it requires more strength to free buzz, and it also completely avoids the risk of excessive mouthpiece pressure, I think of free buzzing as analogous to weight training for athletes. It is a safe and effective way to build muscular strength, which will translate to better embouchure control when actually playing. Because free buzzing is functionally different from a playing embouchure, it's really not useful to use free buzzing as a diagnostic tool. Regardless of the player's embouchure type, free buzzing is most effective when done with the lips in a downstream position. At first, students may need to roll their lower lip slightly in and over their lower teeth to even get a buzz. As they develop strength, their lower lip will move out on its own. In order to really target the proper muscles, Students should buzz softer and in a higher register, striving for a tone that might be described as a mosquito-like buzz. One easy free buzzing exercise is to simply buzz the highest pitch you can for the full extent of your breath three times. You can also practice mouth corner inhalations at the same time by putting your finger over the center of your lips and breathing only through the corners. If that becomes easy, you can simply hold the lips into position without using your finger. Free buzzing is a safe but strenuous workout for the embouchure muscles, so a little bit goes a long way. I recommend separating this exercise from normal playing by at least 20 minutes or so. Doing this exercise once a day is enough for most players at first. Downstream players will sometimes find buzzing into the instrument is a great way to help them find their correct embouchure form. Some downstream players don't respond well to this sort of practice though, especially if they struggle with free buzzing to start with. Upstream players will want to avoid buzzing into the instrument because their embouchure form is very different from buzzing to playing. <laughs> 